hard. Um, really excited. We're live from New York with Seth. No, just kidding. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> uh, really excited to kick it off with Caleb Thomas being our obviously our guest speaker, um, and he's going to chat about branding yourself and believing in yourself, which are two topics that I know I personally try to work on every single day. Um, and I assume that it's going to be a really um, beneficial topic for everybody. Um, I assume most of you have heard of Caleb or seen him. If you've looked on YouTube, he's everywhere. He's awesome. He's hilarious. Um, just a couple of his accolades. He's a two-star diamond coach, success club 10, all-star legend. He's on three separate infomercials from three different programs. Um, he was the monthly Beachbody Challenge winner. He was um, in the Masters Hammers and Chisel Test Group. But the important stuff that he really wants you to know about him is that he's just a regular guy. He's a Christian Christian guy. He's a dog owner. He enjoys the outdoors. We see his dog in the background. And he really likes tacos and pizza. So that's all of the important <laughs> stuff, I think. Um, so I'll just let him take it away. Go ahead, Caleb. It is yours. Hey, thanks, Brooke. Um, it's kind of funny. She's like, can, can you give me your stats so I can introduce you? I'm like, yeah, I like tacos and pizza. And she's like, <laughs> Okay, now seriously, can you give me your stats so I can introduce you? But um, yeah, so that really is what's important to me is tacos and pizza. But um, anyway, uh, you guys probably know who I am. Some of you, if you don't, um, I'm Caleb Thomas. I'm the guy that makes YouTube videos. Um, a lot of people kind of recognize Caleb Thomas through YouTube. Um, and uh, what to tell you about me? I'm 26. No, I'm 28 years old now. Oh my gosh. I'm 28 years old now. Um, I've been a coach for going on three years, not quite yet three years, but um, it's been a wild ride. I got my start with Beachbody back in college. Uh, it's, I don't know if you've ever heard, heard my story, heard me tell it on my, on my YouTube videos, but uh, I found P90X on a YouTube advertisement one time. And it was ironic because I was literally laying on my bed in my dorm um, eating pizza, one of my favorite passions of all time is eating pizza. And I had my pizza box laying on the on the bed next to me, and I had that like Papa John's dipping butter sauce, so good. Um, and it was Thursday. It was obviously Thursday night because Thursday nights are a seven dollar pizza night, and that was like my weekly splurge. So I'd walk across the highway and get pizza, bring it back to my dorm, and lay there and eat pizza and watch YouTube videos all night. And this advertisement for P90X came on. I had never been exposed to Beachbody before. And uh, I saw Wayne Wyatt. Anyone recognize the name Wayne Wyatt? Um, he was top coach 11, 2011, 2012. And this guy gets on this advertisement and he uses this reverse psychology thing. He's like, I did P90X and it was literally the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Like I literally broke my neck. My legs fell off. My eyeball popped out. Like I, I ripped open my stomach when I flexed the one time. Like, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And he, he like does this crazy pose and lightning bolts start shooting out of his abs and he's ripped. Okay. He goes from like fluffy dad to absolutely jacked. And not to mention that guy is huge, like super tall too. I don't know, has anyone ever met him? Wayne Wyatt? Nicest dude ever. If you ever, if you ever see him at, he doesn't usually hang around Beachbody as much anymore, but if you see him at any of the, like, um, if you see him at leadership, I don't know if he'll be there or at um, uh, Summit. I met him at Summit, and he is the nicest guy. He's got like 60 kids. Um, he's, he's the coolest guy ever, anyway. Um, but he is the one that really got me interested in P90X, and I had no idea what I was getting into, but I got on Craigslist, and I bought it off of Craigslist. So quick show of hands. We're going to be really honest with each other right now. Who got their start with Beachbody via illegal copies? Put your hands up. Come on. Oh, there's so many liars on this team call because I know there's more than that. <laughs> um, so that's how I got started with Beachbody. I got on Craigslist because I just honestly didn't know. And um, yeah, barred yours from a friend. That's, that's pretty common too. Um, and uh, I met this guy at this gas station. This is a funny part of my story. I met this guy at this gas station to do the exchange, right? And it's like a podunk town gas station. And there's one little light in the corner flickering. And it's super awkward. And I met this guy. I see this guy from across the, uh, the, the parking lot. And we kind of like make eye contact. And he's wearing a hoodie because it's November and it's cold. So I'm all, already sketched out. And we kind of walk up to each other. And we don't know what to say to each other because this is awkward. We're like in a gas station parking lot, you know, attempting to make a swap of something. And he's like, uh... Uh, do you have the money? 
I'm like, oh, uh, do you have the DVDs? And we did this like super awkward exchange where he handed me the DVDs and I handed him the money and like we like didn't let go of what we wanted to get because or we didn't let go of what we had because we were afraid we we're gonna go like shot in the gas station parking lot or something. Um, dude looked creepy just saying. And we finally like let go of what you know we came to get and turned around and, like ran away from each other looking over each other's shoulders because we were afraid we were yeah, it was totally shady. Um that is Scooty, is that your name? That's the best name ever. Love it, Scooty. Um and yeah, that's how I got my burnt copies of P90X and literally blank DVDs with P90X sharpied on to every single one of them. So I don't even know what workouts is on the individual discs that's burnt. I have no idea what I'm getting. I just paid this guy $25 in a gas station parking lot and everyone's thinking that it was a drug deal, okay? So that's how I got started. Um, overnight, I just sort of made the decision to commit 100% and I started doing it and I went all in. And thank God all the DVDs work and I didn't get like porn or something. And I got awesome, awesome, awesome results. Like I, I went to the grocery store and with every last cent I had, I bought nothing but like vegetables and fruit and like lean chicken for 90 days. And I got really, really, really great results. And I was naturally super excited about it and like telling everybody like, oh my gosh, this is the craziest thing ever. Like, look how ripped I am. And I, you know, I was just super excited and I could touch my, I could touch my toes. Look, I could never do that before. And, um, you know, all these other people started buying P90X and they're like, I was like, they're like, where do you get it? And I was like, just go on Craigslist. There's a really nice guy on there. And so all these people are buying their DVDs off of Craigslist. And, um, long story short, I saw some guy at one point on the internet. Cause at this point I was following lots of coaches, you know, I just was curious. So I was getting on Facebook and just connected with a bunch of coaches and watching Scotty Hobbs and Lindsay Matway and some of these other people they're like constantly going on these trips and like doing these crazy things and like talking about their money and I'm like who are these people like and what the crap are they doing I'm pretty sure they're selling cocaine in Shakeology bags um well I got connected with all these people and this guy reached out he's like hey I'll send you a couple free Shakeology samples if um, you know, you go to this specific page that I direct you to and you put in all of your information in and then click submit, I'll send you a couple samples. And I'm like, sure, I'm a broke college student. I need free meals. So I got two free meals out of signing up to have a coach. <laughs> I had no idea I was doing that, but he became my coach and, um, kind of got duped into that. And he saw my results on Facebook and he's like, dude, you've got to become a coach. You have got to become a coach. Your results are absolutely out of this world. You're the best results I've had on my team yet. And you've, you'd be so good at this. You're obviously sharing it with so many people. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I want nothing to do with your pyramid scheme. I want nothing to do with your direct sales, slimy salesperson crap. And I, I'm not even lying. I literally pulled this out on him. I did this. I pulled this card out. It was like the red card of soccer. Like, I'm a Christian. I can't be involved with something like that. I don't even know what I was talking about, but I just used it as an excuse. Like I used the Christian excuse. Grief. <laughs> um, and he's like, uh, okay, great. So uh, I'll just keep inviting you. And he kept inviting, 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 inviting for six months, a year, a year and a half, two years, two and a half years, three years my coach who I randomly signed up with invited me to become a coach. And it only then got through my thick skull that I needed this in my life. So that's the first point of encouragement I want to give you guys. No, the first point I want to give you is if someone buys some from somewhere other than you and it ticks you off, who's ever had that happen to them where you're like talking to them and they were super excited. Oh, we're going to get you a challenge pack. And it's going to be awesome. And, and you're going to do so, so well. And like, we're going to get you in the challenge group. And as soon as you get your products, just let me know. And we'll get going. And and then they're like, the, like the next channel, okay, I got them. Let's get started. And you're like, no, you didn't. I don't see anything in my back office. And they're like, no, see, I ordered from Amazon or eBay or Craigslist. And you're like, for the love of Shakeology. And you want to kill those people. Well, that was me. So don't give up on those people. Don't give up on those people, okay? Because they may be your future rock stars. They just don't own Okay, it's our job as coaches to educate those people and figure it out. Tara, I don't know who Tara is, but Tara, dang it, that's you, okay? 
Um, oh, <laughs> Tara's waving. She's like, I just bought it off Craigslist yesterday. No. Um, but okay, so that's your first point of encouragement. Your second point is if who's ever seen that amazing coach out there that's not a coach yet, and they are like so, so, so perfect material for becoming coaches, and they, they're like literally better coaches than you, and you've been doing this for years already, and you're like, geez, if I just could get them on my team, like I'll retire. Like I'm going to be set for life. Okay. They're going to blow up my weak leg and I'm going to be a millionaire overnight. Okay. You see those people and they, you, you go to them and you tell them like how much potential they have and they are immediately like screw off. I love you as a person, but I hate what you just asked me to do. Like get out of my life. Okay. Who's ever experienced that? Nobody. You guys need to start inviting more people. Okay everyone's experienced that in some way, shape or form. Okay. Whether it's with a sale or with a challenge group invite or whatever, you better have experienced that. Those people, just because they say no, it doesn't mean you're never going to get a chance to work with them. It just means when they say no, they need more information from you or they need more time to watch you and to, to grow trust with you. Okay. So don't give up on those people either because it took me three years to come around three years of me watching these other coaches. Three years was the time it took I signed, uh, I, when I first found Scotty Hobbs, he had just begun his business, okay? Like, literally, he's like, hi, guys, Shakeology. Like, he was a baby coach, okay? For three years, I watched him, and three years after he signed up, he was in good shape, okay? And then I had to become a coach. I had to become a coach because I saw what he was creating and doing in his life. Um, so... Don't give up on those people, but I became a coach. Uh, long story short, I finally decided I had to do it because I was at rock bottom. I was working at a restaurant. Like my, my life was miserable. Anyone record a restaurant? Anyone ever experienced that? Yeah, you guys get me. It's not a fun job. <laughs> um, I was actually a busboy for longer than anything because I was making more money as a almost minimum wage busboy than a waiter. That's just to give you an idea of how terrible the restaurant was that I worked at. Um, and it was just miserable. I, I hated my life. I was sick and tired of that. I was actually donating my blood plasma at one point to buy my groceries. Um, so talk about rock bottom, like kind of, kind of rough financial world. And I just signed up. I was like, I don't even care. I don't even care if this is illegal. Like just freaking sign me up and give me my money. I don't even care. Just let's do this, okay? And as soon as I signed up, I realized that, you know, hey, this is legit. Like, this is the real deal. There's some really, really amazing things that can happen in this business. And no, they're not selling cocaine and Shakeology bags, if anyone's wondering. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of life changes happening through coaching. And that's kind of, that kind of leads us into what we're talking about tonight and branding and, and you know, coming up with what you are is as a coach in this business. Because when I became a coach, I had that really strong realization right off the bat, which I feel very blessed to have had that I can totally just be myself in this. I can totally own who I am 100% and call that my brand and it's going to work and it worked and it is working and it continues to work. And that's what I want to teach you guys tonight is that you, your brand is so important is so important and all of you can have a very unique brand and all of you can stand out and all of you can be super successful with what you have to offer right now. Okay. A lot of people don't believe that, but I'm going to, I'm going to dispel that myth. Um, so, Hey Brooke, um, I see, I keep seeing the chat coming up. If you guys have, um, specific questions or whatever that I'm missing, just holler, just distract me and pull me off topic or whatever. And, um, ask questions if they're coming up. I'm not watching that just so I don't get distracted. Perfect. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, creating a brand for yourself is, you know, the ultimate point of this is to attract people to you, right? I mean, who would love to have an attraction market where you just like, Hey, this is who I am. And people are like, they, they go to you because they want to work with you. Yeah. We obviously all want that. Um, and this is really, 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 really simple, but it took me, I kind of got the concept when I first started, but it took me a while to really like live it and act out and I just sort of really discovered it not too long ago like honestly just a couple short months ago and I'm still learning and growing but I think I'll be able to give you a couple nuggets tonight that you can take with you or 
maybe not figure it out tonight, but you'll at least be able to think about it and, and have a, a better concept of what am I actually talking about and honestly how simple this is. So what is branding yourself? We're, we're going to just ask a couple questions and go through this. What does that even mean? Like what does branding ourselves even mean? Okay, so you go to a farm and they have a fire and then they stick this metal thing in it and they stick it on your face. No, just kidding. Branding, is your, branding yourself is literally as simple as being yourself and calling it your brand. <laughs> okay, it's like super, super, super simple. Like we always hear people saying branding yourself and finding your niche in the business and making it your own. You know, Caleb, make this business your own. Fireworks, um, standing out from the crowd or um, being unique. You are so beautifully unique or, you know, leaving your skid mark on the platform or like leaving your mark on the world, whatever. Um, I'm a boy. I have a boy mind. Um, and it's, it's really so much more simple than that in my mind. It's, it's just a matter of you being yourself and, and owning it and calling that your brand. And I know you're probably all like, kind of like, oh, that's all he's going to tell us. Great. That was helpful. But we're going to keep going through this um, and keep answering some more questions. So why is creating a brand even important, you know, as individuals in this company? Like, why is it even important for us to be thinking about this? Like, can't we just do what we've been always been doing? Here's what it comes down to. The leaders of this business or of any business, really, you know, the real leaders, they're always constantly taking time to think about what makes them unique and because they have their brands established. They attract more people to them. Okay. Again, that was to attract people to us. It's as simple as like Ford attracting people that want to drive Fords and Honda attracting people that want to drive Hondas or Mercedes attracting people that want to drive Mercedes. It kind of makes sense to us because we've been exposed to that over and over and over again. If you want to drive a Honda, you're not going to go to the Ford car lot, okay? Vice versa, if you want to drive a Mercedes, you're not going to go to the Honda lot. Yes, they're both cars, but they're not the same because they're branded very, very, very different. Everybody gets that concept. Everybody understands that when it's something as common as cars, but Beachbody coaches aren't quite common yet. You know, we've just kind of started this opportunity seven years ago and people don't quite get that we are just as valuable in our world as any consumer object times a trillion. We're so much more than that even. So it's so much more worth spending time thinking about how we can brand ourselves. Um, you need to show people that you have something to offer through your brand what you have to offer through your brand so people know exactly who to go to and get what they want okay so check this out this is a this is a, a really fun thing that i love thinking about so as of the last time i checked and i did nerd out and actually check this number not too long ago there was like 7.26 billion people on this planet that's a lot of people on this planet okay and i'm a man of faith you're going to hear me say this all the time but i believe God very, very purposely created each and every single one of us differently, differently, unique from one another, unique from the person sitting next to you, unique from the person that's right above you on the screen, right below you on the screen, right to the left of you, and right to the right of you on the screen. You're totally different. You're unique from that person. And I think that's amazing that he could do that because honestly, <laughs> here's a little comic relief for you. I can't even come up with like, two recipes for Shakeology. <laughs> oh, like I literally just pour chocolate in and shake it up with water and chug it. It's kind of nasty. But um, there's seven, over seven billion different versions of you guys out there, which is incredible. And I think that's worth capitalizing because if you're, if you're a human, you're a beach body coach, you're unique from everybody else out there. So you have a brand ingrained in you already. You already have something that makes you different and special. And again, it's worth capitalizing on to help you stand out in this business. But too often, people like try and fit into this like cookie cutter, like, oh, hello, I'm a beach body coach. Let me help you. Like, it's crap. Like, nobody wants to work with that kind of person. You got to be you. So you attract people that want to work with you. Okay. So um, let me see here. I, I have an analogy I want to share with you guys, but I'm not quite sure when I want to share. Okay. I'll just keep going here. Um, so is everyone still with me? Thumbs up. I know I'm talking a lot. You guys are awesome. Love you. Okay, cool. So we're going to move on. So the next question is, what are some examples of brands? 
Okay, Caleb, we get the idea that we have a brand. We get the idea that we need a brand. We get the idea that everybody's different and has their own brand within them. What's an example of it? So here's some application teaching. Take a look at your life and ask yourself the simple question, what makes me, me? Okay, it's a simple question when you write it out on paper, but when you're trying to answer it, honestly, it can be really difficult. It can be really, really like, oh, I don't know. Like, what's the meaning of life? But think about it for seriously. Like, you have to sit down and get a notepad and be like, okay, what makes me, me? What are the foundational parts of me? Okay, maybe you have a dog with a crazy personality that takes up a big part of your life. Maybe you're a Christian and you love telling people that and you love sharing your faith with the world. Maybe you're a pilot and you fly powered parachutes and helicopters and, and stuff that could kill you. Um, maybe your dream is to build financial freedom with this crazy opportunity you're building called Beachbody. And so you can give abundantly. Uh, maybe you like going into the mountains and being in nature for your escapes. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you love ins- encouraging and inspiring people to be their best. You're a single mom. Maybe you make um, sitting in your ba- maybe you sit in your basement at all hours of the night and make YouTube videos next to a water heater that rattles, and then you post them for this community of Beachbody coaches that eats them up. Any of these things sound relatively familiar? Like, hopefully, not the single mom thing because I'm not a single mom. But a lot of those were my brand. Like, a lot of those things were big chunks of me, and those are the things that make me me. And here's the cool thing about all that stuff. Those aren't like super unique. I mean, some of them, okay, yeah, not, there's not a whole lot of pilots out there. There's not, not everybody makes YouTube videos. Not everybody has a dog, but you've, you've heard of all of those things before. Like, it's not like I didn't, ha- it's, I didn't have like some special, super unique thing that just made me stand out. And this is where I want to give you this analogy. You guys are like your, your brand and what makes you you. You're, you're like a combination lock, okay? Who's ever seen me do this analogy? Who's ever seen me give this analogy to someone? Anyone? No? <gasps> yes! Okay, you haven't heard this one before. Yay! Okay, so you guys are like a combination lock. You guys have all seen these before. It's just a you know, regular padlock. It has these dials on it, and the dials have numbers on it, and the numbers go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then back to 0. Okay, and there's four of those. Now. When I just read those numbers off to you, did anything stick out? No, nothing stuck out, right? Like there's no special number that stood out that was like, okay, he said zero, one, two, three, Zorful, six, seven, like, wait, Zorful. I've never heard that one before. That's why that padlock works. Oh my gosh. I wish I had that number in my padlock. It doesn't work that way, okay? But for some reason, we as coaches, we think that's how it works with our brands. We think that's how it works with our person in our business, okay? Like we think, we look at other people and we we see their entire combination of who they are and we think, gosh, they there's something unique about them that I just wish I had. Or maybe it's maybe it's the blonde hair. Or maybe it's the videos he makes, or maybe it's this, or maybe it's that. And we, if we just had that number in our combination lock, it would work. So maybe I'll try and do that, okay? And so you come back to your lock, okay? And by the way, these numbers represent things that make us us. Single mom, dog owner. Number two is basket weaver. Number four is... Um, uh, I don't know, pilot number six is something else. You've heard all that stuff before. You've heard every single one of those numbers before in that combination lock. I bet you if anyone came up to you and said, oh, this is something that makes me me, you've heard it before, okay? It's not like, unless, okay, unless they're like some freak in a circus, they're like, oh, I'm a, I'm a lava swallower. That's my profession. You're like, okay, well, that's, that is pretty unique. You could be pretty successful at whatever you put your mind to. Okay, but most things that people say make them them are not unique. It's the combination of those things that makes them unique, okay? So if you take all those boring individual things that don't stand out at all and put them into your combination, your lock is going to unlock. 
it's gonna work. Does that make sense? Is that an analogy? Yes or no? That wasn't the best I've ever explained it, but I hope it comes across. So you guys, it's not, don't stop searching for that one like amazing, unique thing that's going to just, oh, I can be a beach body coach now. Cause it doesn't work that way, folks. It doesn't work that way. All of you, all of you, and you're a beautiful mess, like your beautiful self, like your good stuff, your bad stuff, your, your struggles, your wins, all that comes together and makes the perfect combination to make you successful. And here's the cool thing. Nobody else has your unique combination. Yes, some other people might have something from your combination, might have one of those numbers or two of those numbers or three or even four or five or six of those numbers, but there's a number there that nobody else has in the same combination, okay? Nobody else out there has the same combination as you. Don't make the mistake of looking at somebody else's combination and going back to your business and putting their numbers into your lock and thinking it's going to work because newsflash, it's not going to. When I first became a coach, I, I studied Scotty Hobbs like a freaking Uh-oh. <laughs> Caleb, come oh, yeah. back. Can you hear me? There he is. Okay. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. I think, I, I think it kicked me off because I said freaking. <laughs> Whoops. So I studied Scotty Hobbs like a hawk. <laughs> I studied him like a hawk when I first started. And I took everything he did and I tried to duplicate it exactly. And I failed miserably because it wasn't true to me. It wasn't true to me. Yeah, there were some things that were true to me, but not all of it, okay? So your challenge is to think about what makes you you, write it down on a piece of paper if you have to, and really just own it unapologetically. Continuously put it into your combination and you will see things happen over time. It's not gonna happen overnight, but it will work, okay? So next question. How do I create my brand? You know, we just kind of talked about what a brand is, examples of brands, combinations of things that make our brands. How do you come up with it? This is super simple. Again, I'm not going to overcomplicate this for you or make you overthink it or anal overanalyze it. Again, branding yourself is as simple as being yourself and living it publicly. Too many people put filters on themselves. Too many people because they study other coaches and they see them doing those things and be like, well, I wouldn't normally do that, but I guess I'll do that because that's what Beach Valley coaches do, right? Stop that. Like, stop filtering your crap, okay? Be you and say you're a Beach Valley coach, okay? Because when you do that, people are like, hey, that's the person I've always known. Now they're a Beach Valley coach. Cool. I can still work with them. But when you change, you change. It's like dating somebody that makes you want to change. Like, that's not the person you should be dating, okay? You're dating Beach Valley. Don't, they don't want you to change. They want you to be unapologetically you, right? Okay. Um, don't tell your spouse you're dating somebody. Um, so next little point. I'm new. I haven't figured this out yet. I haven't figured out my brand. Why can't I just continue to brand myself as a Beachbody coach? Why can't I just be a Beachbody coach for now and then figure out my brand in time? You can do that, but think about this. So many people do that. So many people come into this business and they're like, yeah, who's a brand new coach? Show of hands. Who's new? Oh, a couple of hands. Oh, you're so baby cute. You baby, baby coaches. Welcome. Welcome to the roller coaster. Hold on for dear life. This is amazing. Um, but too many people make this crazy mistake of coming in and they're like, okay, yesterday I was Caleb Thomas, but the old me is gone. I'm a beach body coach now, baby. And I'm just going to vomit it everywhere. Okay. And all they do is they get on their Facebook page or their Instagram, their Insta, I'm, I'm learning about Instagram. Insta's cooler. Um, and they like beach body this, beach body that, blatant beach body everywhere, like generic poster pictures, generic like copy pasting their beach body website link into their Facebook page. And it comes up with that horrible link, like, ugh, like stop challenge pack sales and promotion pictures and corporate provided crap and just, ugh. And it's like the, the old Brooke King is gone. The old Caleb Thomas is gone. Like, I have no idea where they went, but there's some like robot on the other side just sharing a bunch of crap, obviously trying to sell stuff, just trying to make money. 
Like that is the worst thing you could do as a new coach. Um, that's not your brand. The long, long story short, that's what I was trying to get, get the point across. That's not your brand. You are you and now Beachbody is a part of you. Okay. So when you're telling your story to the world, stop telling Beachbody first and saying, oh, and I'm Caleb Thomas. No, you're still Caleb Thomas. Well, I'm still Caleb Thomas, but now Beachbody is a little nugget of my life. And it's, it is impacting all the other parts of my life, but I'm still Caleb Thomas foundationally, okay? So I want to encourage you guys to, to make sure you're approaching that with the right priority. Make sure you're approaching your story and your social media and all these different things, with the right priorities and, and in the right order. Like you're still you. People want to see your face. People want to see your life. People want to see your story. They don't just want to see beach body crap, okay? You can make beach body a part of your story, but it's not your story, okay? Beach body is not the story. You are the story, and beach body is a part of that. Hope, hope that makes sense. Um, so don't brand yourself as beach body. And by the way, <coughs> if you decide to do it anyway, think about this. Beach body is a billion plus dollar brand. <laughs> They're going to beat you with their marketing. <laughs> they are always going to win. You're competing against a billion dollar health and fitness empire. You're, be, you're, 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 you're fighting against over 400,000 other people that could also be claiming the same brand as you. So you're much better off being uniquely you and showing that Beachbody is just a part of you, okay? Um, don't compete with big wigs. So, um, blah, 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 blah. what's next? Couple tips. We're gonna wrap this up so it doesn't go doesn't go too late. Um, couple tips when you're thinking about your brand and you're developing your brand. Um, stay consistent with it. You know, really, really do your best to stay consistent when you come up with your brand and when you think about it. And you know, put it out there over and over and over again. Think about think about a couple of these companies. Um, sorry, I just hiccuped. That was awkward. Um, dinner. Uh, think about, think about like Apple, uh, Mercedes and Ford and Honda. We mentioned those before and Beachbody or Weight Watchers or, um, Southwest Airlines or all these, you know, all these brands, when you hear them, you know exactly who they are and what they are and who they serve and what they do and why they do it and when they do it. And you can pretty much guarantee they're going to come through for you as a consumer with what they have to offer because they're rock solid consistent. They stick to their guns. Same for us. We need to stick to our guns. We need to be who we are over, over, over and over and over and over again. So we're consistent. And because, you know, because those companies have established the brands that they have and they stick to it, people will flock to them to consume what they offer. People like remember them when they realize that they have, they want something. People remember Remember Southwest Airlines when they want to fly somewhere because they're like, you know what? I remember it was pretty nice getting to pick my seat and not having assigned seats and just getting on the plane and picking one. It was pretty cool. Um, they remember McDonald's because they love the salty fries, okay? And it's delicious. They remember they want to go to McDonald's for those fries because they remember fries are always at McDonald's, okay? So make sure that when you pick what, pick what you want to share, stick to it. Um, you know, it's I'm a funny analogy person, but like imagine if Apple one day made phones and the next day made cotton candy. <laughs> and then the next day they like introduced a new furniture line. And then the next day they came out with like lawn fertilizer. You'd be like, what the is going on? Like, are these people smoking something that I don't know about? This is crazy. These people are ridiculous. Okay. So be consistent. They are consistent. We can learn from that. Next tip. Don't discredit yourself. Seriously. Don't ever believe you don't have something to offer. Right from day one. Like if you're a brand new coach, you have something to offer. I, you know, I said you're unique pretty, pretty many times in this call purposely. I wanted to throw it in there over and over and over to drive it into your brains. Like you are unique and you have something to offer. Like, and it's a great thing to offer. It's not just like a, well, you got to figure it out and then see if it works. Like, no, you can be confident that it's something great. Like you are unique for a reason. God created that you created you that way. And you're going to be able to do some really amazing things. If you trust that and you, and you have faith in that and you go out and you apply yourself as a coach through that. Okay. Um, 
don't discredit yourself. Here's a, here's a little example. Um, when, <laughs> when I first started making YouTube videos, I would get like five views maybe. And four of those were my mom. <laughs> she was like, Oh my gosh, she's, she's so cute. I love my son. He's so good. But honestly, like no one watched my YouTube videos, but I didn't discredit myself because I knew I had a message and I knew I wanted to put it out there. And yeah, I didn't have the perfect technique down and I wasn't like quite sure what I was saying yet, but I knew I had something to say. So I just kept doing it over and over and over. And 10 views turned into 20 views, turned into a hundred views, turned into a thousand views. And now some of my videos on YouTube have over are approaching. I think one of them is approaching a million views, which is no, not a million views. Um, yeah, almost a, like by one transformation video has a ton of views and that only happened because I didn't discredit myself even when it was tough at the beginning, even when no one responded at the beginning, no one's going to respond to your brand at first. No one's going to respond. But if you don't discredit yourself and you stay consistent tip number one, it's going to work in time. Okay. Um, another one exude confidence. This kind of goes with the, the, the past two, but this is a, this is a fun analogy for this one. I love Apple. If you haven't, if you couldn't tell, I, I'm constantly talking about Apple. When the iPod came out, this is one of my favorite stories. The iPod came out. Steve Jobs was super excited about this new revolutionary device, as they always say. And he's so excited about this thing. It's going to revolutionize the music world. And he dropped this thing in the market, and it sold like 100,000 units. <laughs> and they were expecting to sell like millions of these things. And it was the biggest tech flop ever. And everyone was like, dude, Steve Jobs, this was a flop. Let's move on to the next thing. Let's get back to computers. And he was like, no, I'm confident that this is where we're going, okay? I'm confident in what we have to offer. And the second year, flop, another flop. They sold like 200,000 or something like that. It was another terrible, dismal failure. Third year, flop, everything crashed and burned. The whole company was going downhill because they were pouring so much into this iPod and nobody was buying it, okay? I actually had one of the first iPods ever. It sucked. It was so bad, okay? And as soon as the fourth year hit, though, everything changed. The tipping point happened. He was so confident in what he had to offer. He knew he had vision for where he was going. He stuck to that vision, and boom, who's ever had an iPod in their life? Who's ever had some sort of an Apple device in their life that's been influenced by that iPod? Yes, almost every single person on this call has been influenced by that one device because. He was simply confident in what he had to offer. What's the analogy here? Can you imagine how many people you could influence if you just became confident that you had something to offer, that you had, you had exactly what somebody out there needs, okay? So be confident. Just be boldly confident. If you're not confident now, just make the decision. Hey, I'm going to be confident. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to believe in myself. And that's as simple as it gets. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to act like I believe myself. And then suddenly you'll realize that, hey, you actually do believe in yourself. You actually do have some confidence, okay? Um, and then, you know, uh, finally, you know, I won't even say that last one. That's not really that helpful. But um, guys, what it comes down to is this, is you got to share your story. You got to share you, your life. You know, nobody else's life but you, unapologetically. Um, and here's the really, really, really big tip I want, or the really, really big thing I want to have you guys leave this call with. If you don't do this, this is, we're going to get serious for a second. If you guys make a decision not to, 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 to develop your brand and not to put yourself out there and not to use this as a golden opportunity to reach so many people and be that bridge to help people cross over to a healthier, happier, more fulfilling life. If you choose not to, to be your, your own brand, there's somebody out there in your circle of influence that can only relate to you. That can only relate to you. Like you are the only person on this planet that they can listen to and react to. They are the only person out there that will say the right thing, or you are the only person there and in their circle that will ever say the right thing to help them. And if you decide not to say those things, if you decide not to be you unapologetically, they're not going to get their opportunity. Okay. And you might feel comfortable because you stay in your little box of comfort, your comfort zone, but unless you step out of it, you might not ever reach that one person and then they don't get that opportunity. And what about them? Okay. 
So leaving this call, you now have a responsibility, whether you realize you had it before or not. When you leave this call, if you decide to quit, even, if you just decide coaching is not for you, hey, you know what? There's still someone out there that's not going to get their opportunity because you decided to walk away. Put yourself in their shoes. You know, think about that person. So I want you to just, I want you to keep that in your back pocket. Anytime that things are getting tough, anytime you're feeling stressed out and like, ah, I don't, I can't, I don't know if I can do this anymore. You can, because you have to, because that one person's not going to get their, their chance if you don't. Okay. So that's all for today, folks. I want you guys to just be yourselves and own it unapologetically and put it out there over and over and over and over again and know and trust and have faith in the fact that God created you to do some really, really amazing things with your time on earth. So do it. Wow. That was awesome. <laughs> I have like pages and pages and pages of notes. That was really, really great. Thank you so much. Do you have a couple minutes sure. for questions or? Yeah, sure. We can do that. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, it's always awkward to start. I was kind of thinking when you were talking about like new coaches and you were talking about um, developing their brand, how would you start? So they signed up as a coach the next day. Like wh how do they start kind of weaving Beachbody into their posts? Yeah. So, um, I always, I always encourage my coaches to, to do a really blunt, honest, like, Hey guys, I have like, I, I tell them, like, I want you to tell the world you have no idea what you're doing because you don't. And I want you to start owning that story right from the beginning. And that honesty, you know, I tell them to get on their Facebook or whatever and be like, Hey guys, you know, some of you may have been following my journey up to this point. Um, I've decided to kind of take it to the next level. I became a coach. I'd love to help as many people as possible, but honestly, I have no clue what I'm doing. I have no clue what I'm doing. And I just love as much support as I can get. And just honestly, that, that right out of the gates, honesty and realness with people, it gets such a massive response that, you know, they're immediately like, wow, I, I guess I don't have to be anything special. I guess I can just continue to be myself and be successful at this. Um, Here's a, this is something that I learned from Scotty Hobbs um, as a new coach. Um, he told me one time that, you, you know, like a lot of people have this hesitation when they sign up as a new coach and they're like, oh, I don't have credibility, so I can't really do a whole lot yet. I can't really like say anything bold. I can't really, why are people going to want to work with me? I don't have any experience with this. Here's the thing. You don't need experience. You don't need credibility. You just need vision and you need to be able to share that vision with the world. It's kind of like Martin Luther King Jr. when he did his big speech that is like in, in history forever now. He's like, hey guys, I have a dream and it's of these white and black kids playing on a playground and they're like holding hands and they're dancing and they're sliding on the slides and they're pushing each other on swings and they're like giving each other high fives and chest bumps and it's like there's not even a care in the world and they're having the best time of their lives. Can you picture that? Can you picture what I just told you right now? like of those kids playing on the playground. Can you picture it in your mind right now? That's exactly what we can do as coaches. He had no credibility. He had never led a civil rights movement before. He had never, you know, done this in any other country. He had never like changed laws. He had never done anything like that before, but he had a vision and a dream so strong that even as the most non-credible person in front of that audience, he led an amazing movement. Okay. It's the same for us as coaches. We can tell people exactly where we're going to be in five years from now. Can you picture where it will be? Like, can you tell people right now where you're going to be in five years? Cause if not, you need to spend some time thinking about that because once you get on fire for where you're going to be five years from now, you can tell the world that, and they're going to be just as excited as you. Okay. And they're going to want to sign up for that, even though they don't have the details. Like dude, in five, I have a check sitting on my wall right now that says seven figures, seven figures by 2017. And it's going to happen. And I'm so excited because like, can you, can you just imagine the freedom that's going to be like, I will never have to worry about paying bills again. The bills will come, I'll pay them. And then I'll go play with my kids. And I'm going to have so much time to like, just do all, whatever I want. And I'll give to my church and I'll go on trips and I'll like be present with my wife and my kids. And I'll get to take my kids to school in the morning. I get to bring them home and I'm not there yet, but I'm going to be there. And wouldn't it be awesome to do that together? That's what I tell my new coaches to do. And that gets them going. Yeah. Perfect. Did that answer your question? Sorry. <laughs> Does anybody else? That was the question. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was, you answered it. <laughs> okay, cool. Hello? What else? Come on. There's got to be something else. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. 
Hi, Kayla. Um, hi, my name's Vicki. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for your YouTube videos. They're really, really awesome. Um, sure. I wanted to ask you um, about being a, a new coach or a semi-new coach or um, just being in it. What, how do you feel about like pages and stuff like that for branding purposes? Or what, what was the last thing? Or brand? Right. So you're talking about branding and, and do you feel that a like page is a definite must or how do you feel yeah, about okay. so, like? Yeah, that's, that's a really common question. And I think the best, the best universal answer you could, you could get is pick one and stick to it. Like just, just make your decision, you know, what, wherever you feel more comfortable and just stick to it. You know, like too many people are like, well, which one's better? The one that you stick with is better. <laughs> um, because so many people were like, oh, I'm going to start a like page because it's so much better. And then they go start it and they don't do anything on it. Okay. Like I have a like page and I share some posts to it, but my, my, my cream is like right on my profile page. Like that's, that's my private page. That's where I thrive best. I don't do advertising. I don't do any of that stuff. I do purely organic um, connection with people just simply being myself on my profile page. Um, I don't do much business on my profile page, so I don't have to worry about getting shut down. All my business is behind the scenes, which is perfectly legal. Um, if you, if you do want to do exactly what I told you not to do tonight and just post lots of links for sales and crap, you're going to have to do that on your like page because if Facebook catches onto it, uh, they will shut down your profile eventually. Um, they're getting better and better and better at finding people for doing that stuff. But long story short, just pick one, like wherever you think is better for you and your skills and talents. Like if you're super good at figuring out like advertising campaigns on social media, definitely go for the like page. If you're just, just want to be you and like not do any of the businessy kind of stuff and just kind of own it, do the profile page. Just make your decision and stick with it. Stay consistent. Maybe one more. Can we take a picture real quick? Sure. Everybody smile. <laughs> Jazz hands. Ja well, hold on. Let me get this thing out of the way so I get everybody in there. Ah! I'm frozen. Okay, hold on. Okay, jazz hands. Ready? Go. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Are you taking taking a video or a picture? <laughs> oh no, I think it was on the wrong thing actually. Um, does anybody else have any questions while we have Caleb? This was really really awesome. Thank you so much for doing this for us. Sure. Yeah. I could just listen to you for all, all night. So if people have questions. Oh, then. gosh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> Anything else? One more question? Yeah. This is your chance. I just have you, like, in person right now. Okay. Um, if you know, like, you're like you, and you're just really good at talking, and you do more voicemails like you do um, when you're messaging because it's more personal, um, how do you – um, I don't, I guess my, how do you turn those voicemails kind of into like your, co like constant conversation? Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'll send a voicemail and I, I don't, I'm not getting as much of a response as I do when I get, when I type it out. Okay. So type it out. Yeah. Do what works. <laughs> you know, if it's, if, if you're getting a better if you're getting a better, better gas mileage by putting, you know, unleaded gas in your, in your tank than diesel gas, put unleaded gas in it. You know, it's, um, but, but with that said, you know, like it's just a matter of, um, maybe it's just a matter of practicing and getting better at the voice messages. Cause when I first started, <laughs> it was like when, when they first came out with that, they didn't give you the option to like erase it and start over. So I'd be like, Hey, it's Caleb Thomas here. I just want to reach out, say hi. I just saw your post, and and I, <laughs> uh, I just, sorry, I just blew snot all over my hand. Um, I'm gonna start over. <laughs> hey, it's Caleb Thomas here. I just saw your post on Facebook. Like I, I literally have to start over because I was so bad at it. Um, but maybe it's just a matter of practicing. Maybe it's um, just a matter of doing more write-outs because you know writing out the message is better. So whatever works for you, go for that. You don't have you don't have to do it because somebody else said to do it. 
Messing up on a voicemail would make you real, though, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, own it. Seriously, oh, man, own it. it when, you, when you, like, realize you can own it, like, it makes life so much more fun. Like, you fart in church, and you're like, oh, that was totally me, guys. Sorry. Like, own it. Own it. It's so much more fun. Like, when you just get over that whole, like, oh, gosh, that was ridiculous. Anyone see that? I hope everyone saw that because that was really funny. You know, just own it. It's a lot more fun. I find humor. Oh, wait, what was that? I find humor and humility. A little humor and humility flattery go a long way. Yep, she does. Or a car full of people. people. Yes, Christian. (laughs) (laughs) Was that like something that happened on the way to Super Saturday or what? On the way home from Super Saturday. (laughs) (laughs) On the way home. (laughs) Love it. Funny. Okay. Well, thank well, hey, Brooke, you so thanks much. so much for having me. Thank you. That was really, really awesome. Megan, do you have anything before for your team, Raven? Thank you. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, guys. Love you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.